Have you ever wondered how to do a track panorama for hours on end and have it all work out? Well in this video I'm going to take you through how I plan and capture tracked panoramas at medium focal lengths. Let's get stuck in. If you're new to the channel guys, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. So I've had a few questions pop up in the past about how I go about capturing uh, tracked panoramas at medium focal length, sort of 35, 50mm, 85mm and those sort of things. So in this video, I want to get stuck in and show you guys how I prepare and plan to go out and shoot those big tracked panoramas at medium focal lengths. So I think we better jump on the computer and have a look. So the image I want to talk about today is this one here that I shot of our Milky Way here in the summertime in Australia. Now before I do any sort of planning, there's three things I need to know before I can do any sort of planning. And those three things are what focal length I'm going to use, what exposure time I want to use, and just what I want to image, whether it's a full arch, just part of the Milky Way, you know, what I'm actually going to image. Now, for this image, I knew that I wanted a 50mm focal length just because I like the resolution that gives me. And the exposure time, I decided on three minutes up front because it's a ball to one sky and I knew I could do as long exposures as I want. And the third thing was figure out just what I wanted to shoot. Now, if you know me and you know my work, it was always going to be a full panorama, so that decision was made. And knowing these three things up front is really critical in the planning process, and I'll show you why. So I've jumped over here on my phone onto the Planet app, and this is a really good app for planning panoramas. Now, what we can see I've done is I'm in the Milky Way mode, and I'm also in the panorama mode. And what I've done is I've adjusted the field of view here, which is these two green lines, to include all of the Milky Way arch, which is indicated by all these yellow dots, very similar to photo pills. And it's telling me that to get the full arch in on this date at this time, I need a field of view of 200 degrees. Now, I've also put in here a 50 mil focal length because that's what we've decided to use. And the camera's in portrait orientation. And knowing these things, that this app is telling us that we're gonna need to shoot 19, uh, 19 images wide to get that full field of view. And I've also in, told the app to use a 50% overlap, which is what I always use. And what it also tells us here is that we need to set our indexing panorama head to 10 degrees to get that 50% overlap. Now, when we look at how many rows we need to shoot, I've actually just put in here three rows, just because I know out of experience that's about what we need to do. But what I can also do is check if that's gonna be okay by jumping in here to the viewfinder VR. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us that field of view that we've told it. So it's gonna be three images high and 19 images wide. And we can just scroll through the time here and just see if that field of view is gonna give us the nice big bow. And we can see here that it does. Now, why would we go through the trouble of you know, doing this app? This app gives us some really key information that we can now use to jump over into Stellarium. So let's do that. So now we have some really good information to work with. What we know is we need to set the index of our panorama head to 10 degrees or thereabouts to get our 50% overlap. And we need to shoot 19 images wide and three high to get the full arch in. And that's 57 images just for the sky. And we also know that we've chosen three minute exposures per image, which gives us a total exposure time of about three hours. Now, we need to add a little bit more time than three hours for things like leveling the rig, focusing, and just messing around in the dark pretty much. So let's just say three and a half hours to capture the sky. Now, armed with this information, we can jump into Stellarium and see how we're gonna shoot it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump through the time here and find a point where the Milky Way's in a nice big arch. And we can see here that's pretty cool. At about half past 12 at night, we can see the Milky Way is in a nice big arch over the horizon there. And this is what we want the finished image to look like. Now, from those settings we figured out before, we know it's gonna take us between, you know, three and three and a half hours to capture this image. So what that means is we're gonna to have to come back three hours or three and a half hours, and this is the point where we're gonna to have to start shooting the image. Now, this is the point where people get a bit confused and really struggle to get their head around the fact that they need to start shooting so early. But because we've chosen the settings we have with a 50 mil lens, a three minute exposures, and we wanna shoot such a wide panorama, we just don't have any other choice. And if you, if you wanna shoot for less time, you know, we can compromise and maybe go back to a 35 mil lens 
and only do two minute exposures and that will mean that it won't take us three hours to capture them all. And what you can see it's done for us now is it's brought us back almost to the blue hour. Now that's one reason I decided to shoot at this time of year. So I could shoot my foreground in the blue hour and then half an hour later jump straight into my sky exposures. So the next thing we need to look at is the order in which we're gonna capture these images. Now this one's pretty self-explanatory where I'm gonna to have to start shooting at the top and work my way down because obviously at the start of the night now, most of the Milky Way is still below the horizon. And we know it's gonna take us about an hour per row to shoot. So what I'm gonna do is start up here somewhere and work my way to the right. And it's gonna take about one hour per row. So after the first row, that's what it's gonna look like. And then what I'm gonna do is come and start a second row and that's what it'll look like after the second row. And then as I do my bottom row, we can see we've got that nice big arch. So that's the way I would shoot this image. And it's obviously just the reverse. If it's later in the season and the Milky Way setting, you would have to start at the bottom and work your way up as the Milky Way sets. So the next thing to consider is, you know, how to get a foreground in front of a sky that's moving so far. And as you see, we're going to track the sky for over three hours and the sky is going to move significantly as we can see as we scroll through the time. Now, how do we get a foreground subject to end up in the center of our panorama if, if the sky moves so much? And it's actually really simple because the only thing that connects the sky to the ground is the row that includes the foreground itself. Now, that means that when we set up our camera, all we need to do is look at Stellarium and get get a bearing on where the center of the arch is when we're going to shoot our horizon row. And as we can see here, at half past 12, we're pointing 90 degrees east. So we're pointing pretty much due east when we're going to shoot our horizon row. Now that means when we get out in the field, if I just get a compass and point the camera due east and then shoot from there, I know that when it all stitches together, that due east is going to be the dead center of my panorama. And whatever foreground interest is, if you put that at 90 degrees, it'll end up in the dead center of the arch. Before we go any further, I just want to remind you guys, if you enjoy what I do and you're learning stuff, like, subscribe, it's free, it's easy, and it helps grow the channel and put my videos in front of more people. Let's get back into it. So the last thing we need to consider here is how we actually know where to start and finish the panorama because the sky's moving so much. And we can't actually use a land-based reference to know when to start and finish the panorama. So what we need to do is look for something in the sky to give us a reference to where to start and finish shooting. Now, as you've seen, I started shooting this panorama in the top left-hand corner. Now, to know where and where to start and stop, all I'll do is look over here to where the Milky Way tail disappears over the horizon when the Milky Way is in its final position. And all I'm going to do is follow a line up and this is pretty good. So I'm gonna pick this star here. And as we can see, as we follow this line down, it's all the way past the Milky Way on the left. And if we follow this line around here, it's up above the top of the arch. So this star here would be a really good star to use as a reference point and put the center of my camera on that star. Now what we can do is scroll back through the time and we can see where it is here. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. You can either, you know, remember what that star is or use a planetarium map when you're out in the field, or you can just get a bearing on it. So we can see this is 70 degrees east. So if we, you know, start up here at 70 degrees east and work across from there, our 19 images, we know that we're gonna get the whole arch in. So we would work all the way across the top, 19 images all the way around, and then we would find a star that we finish on. Now, it may be this star here. And once you've got your top row done, it's really simple. Because you've got a reference point where you started and finished, if I start the image with this star in the center of my frame, when I finish my first row, I'll come all the way back to the start, and I'll find that star again, referring back to that image, and I'll just come down 50% overlap, keeping it in the same position left or right on the screen, but just down 50%. And then I'll work my way all the way around to where the finish reference star is. 
And that means that as the Milky Way changes its position throughout the night, you're still following the sky in the exact same position. And same thing for the third row. You may not be able to see this star for your third row, but you would have picked up another star further down that you can use as a reference point for where to start the third row. And it's really that simple. So that'll be it for this one, guys. I hope it's helped you out and given you a bit of an insight into how I plan to go out and shoot my track panoramas. If you're gonna go out and shoot your own track panoramas, remember, tag me on Instagram because I love seeing what everyone's up to. And as always, until next time, cheers, guys.